Let's talk about some drama. Who likes drama chat? Let's talk about Scarlon. Let's talk about everyone's favorite branded player. We still know. Deep down, you know it to be true. You can never escape branded. I think this is gonna go down as one of the worst balance decisions the TCG has ever made. Returning a hated card with a meta level deck, summoning it every turn one and able to lock any attribute they want. And it's only gonna be played more after the August ban list. So, Protos came back to three, I think? Or was it one? It doesn't really matter. This card could be a fucking 14 or two, and it just would not matter because you're only ever gonna play one. And the idea is, uh, in Ritual Beast, you're able to summon like two level four fires, just like, because you can, because fuck it, why not? And you're able to overlay those into like the Flame Princess, and then you can go into Nemesis Flag, and Flag summons whatever, and then Flag searches Protos, and then you can summon Protos because Ritual Beast stuff are all basically different attributes. So you're just gonna banish like one of your fires and then, you know, a wind and, I don't know, like a light? Goodbye, Lara, I guess. And then you go Protos to clear an attribute and like you win the game. Or does it? Because if you actually look at like the tournament breakdown for the EU WCQ, like, sure, there are a couple more Ritual Beast players kind of scammed their way in a top cut relative to the NA WCQ, where I don't think a single one did. But when you look at like the overall results of Ritual Beast as a whole, like what? It has four top 64 slots and just one guy randomly made a super good run. Like Memento had two tops, Whitewoods had two top, Labyrinth had a top, Runic Stun had two tops, Ubell had like seven tops. Are we gonna say that like, yeah, Ritual Beast is a deck within the meta. Is it a meta deck? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Ritual Beast is just by the mechanism in which you could Protoss under Shifter. That's it. It's just a combo deck that you could play under Shifter. That's why people don't like it. Literally guarantee you, if you take away Dimension Shifter from this deck, this deck is unplayable. 90% of like how you win games in rich with Ritual Beast, outside of just like hoping your opponent doesn't open like two hand traps, it's just like, yeah, I'm against Snake Eye and I activated Shifter, or I'm against Snake Eye and I won the dice roll and they open no hand traps. And by like that mechanism, almost any deck can be playable. Ritual Beast is a tier 3 rogue, definitely not meta. Like when we look at the NAWCQ, like Ritual Beast had like two tops. Despia had a top, Gimmick Puppet had two tops, Runic had three tops, Ubel had nine tops. Like these are decks that exist within the format, but they're definitely not like tier 1 decks. They're like, like Snake Eye is still without a doubt, probably like a tier 0 or at very least tier like 1.5. Ubel and Tenpai are chilling at like tier 1 or tier 2. And there's just everything else is that rogue, because this is what like rogue representation actually means. You know, like, Rogue isn't a deck where it's like, oh yeah, like, Tenpai's a Rogue deck because it's not, like, the number one slot in human history. Like, no, a Rogue deck is something like Labyrinth or Magical Musket or Memento, where these decks are able to, like, scam into top cuts, but very, very inconsistently. And they need very, very, very specific tournament runs in order for them to get their feet off the ground, you know what I mean? Once people start preparing for it, the deck will die. You don't have to prepare for it. Ritual Beast loses to, like, an Ash Blossom plus Nibiru. Ritual Beast loses to, like, like, all the same snuff that Fiendsmith, Snake Eye, and Ubel loses to. Except, like, Effect Villar. We don't talk about that one. But, like, Imperm Ash is, like, there to get you 90% of the time. The only real difference between, like, Ritual Beast and Voiceless Voice is the fact that Ritual Beast's end board is, like, better. Like, Ritual Beast can end, like, a Pop, a Floodgate, a Targeted Banish, and, you know, Protos. But it can also play, you know, Shifter, which is, like, let's be real here, like, the big deciding factor in why, like, Riddy Beast is kind of Liddy Beast, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ritual Beast very much is the deck where it's, like, if they have it, they have it. Like, you Imperm their normal summon can they're like, they look at their hand. If they have Lara or e Telly, you activate it. And if you're able to stop that, like 99% of the time, they just pass. And like, and let's be real, most of the time, Ritual Beast is just not gonna have it because that's a deck where it's just so fucking bricky. It's not like bricky in the sense where like the deck is inconsistent, but it's bricky in the sense where there are definitely a lot of cards in this deck where you don't want to open. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to open, like you're playing like Petalfin for name diversity. You're playing like a Peleo or a uh, ulti guy Apello, as well as like ulti Apello, and you're playing like flag and you're playing lara small lara and winda and when as like names and you're playing like triple evenly main triple dark ruler main like when you actually like look at a test hand you're maybe gonna open like one or two starters and maybe one extender you know what i mean like ritual beast just isn't that much of a meta deck for people to be like we need to reban protos protos isn't the issue the issue is like there's a deck that can play shifter and if protos really 
really was the issue, then like, why isn't Sword Soul topping? You know what I mean? Like, that's a deck that plays like two hand traps. It's because like Protoss isn't that good. It's like good sometimes. Like Protoss can get you there sometimes in very specific formats. Unless you're able to like back up Protoss of something like more substantial than like, you know, one negate and Sword Soul or like one pop, then Protoss is just so weak on its own. Because it actually doesn't do anything by itself. You know what I mean? Like you can call Fire versus Snake Eye. It's not gonna like actually win you the game on the spot. Because like, let's be real. We have Fiendsmith combo. We have like Dia Bell Star combo. Like, let's not pretend like the fucking Snake Eye board isn't able to just be like, all right, sure. And they just do like the entire Dia Bell Star like Fiendsmith Snake Eye line. And they just, and the Ritual Beast player gets OTK'd in like 12 seconds. Are board breakers good again? In decks that aren't able to be playing small enough engines, in which case they could facilitate like 20 plus hand traps, I think that you can definitely get away with board breakers. Like Ritual Beast is a perfect example of this deck. Like this is a deck with like a very large engine. This is like one, two, like six, seven, nine. It's like 11 cards, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 20. This is like a deck with 25 engine slots. And that's not including like Pot of Prosperity. So you can either make like this half compromising way where you're just like, all right, I'm just going to put like 15 hand traps. I know I should be playing like 21 to at least guarantee two statistically most of the time. But like if I don't draw them, then like whatever, I guess I'm just bad. Or you could try like this very all in strategy where you're like, I'm going to just play the most despicable bomb cards going second. And I'm just going to have to like sack my way to victory. My Mimigul deck list is like, the exact opposite of that where i'm just like this deck has no capacity in its ability to go second like what i could maybe make like a zeus and pray to christ i'm just like i'm gonna play the most impactful hand traps that this deck can play which is like shifter and nibiru and like dominus purge because dominus purge doesn't turn on like tactics and is like kind of relevant but i'm just like i'm gonna play like 17 floodgates in the main deck yes mimical dungeon is a floodgate and if you guys like let me win this dice roll this is like the greatest deck ever going first but and if i lose like i'm playing mimical bro I was destined to lose this game from fucking frame one. It is important to, in like deck building processes to be like, to be willing to make certain concessions within your deck and be like, all right, if I just get really, really lucky and I win the dice roll or like I open a shifter in my shifter deck or I just open like the turbo nuts in like my snake eye hand or like whatever, which is, you know, any fucking snake eye hand. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, this is going to get me there. And, and it's just going to do really well on a day where the stars align into your favor and like ritual beast fucking makes it to grand finals. But that doesn't necessarily necessitate it being like a meta deck that we have to watch out for. Ritual Beast existing is a symptom of the Snake Eye problem where people are looking for any other solution in order to play a deck that isn't fire because people are so sick and tired of that deck as well as the fact that people want to play a deck that actually has a particular edge over Snake Eye. And in Ritual Beast's case that edge is being able to play a shifter deck as well as playing like some of the best board breakers known to man such as Evenly Dark Ruler and Book of Eclipse. Mimicool is is my quote unquote edge over Snake Eye, where it's a deck where I'm just able to load up on the most disgusting, stupid hand traps and floodgates ever known to humankind. Like, you know, something's wrong when you see a deck list with three main deck power sink stone and three main deck summoning curse. But you guys can understand where just because one particular deck has a very successful meta run doesn't necessitate that, all right, we have to immediately like ban X card. Like, let's be real, banning floodgates objectively would make this game better. If like every card that's Said, like you cannot or like your opponents cannot or like neither player can or like monsters effects cannot or blah 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 like that would just be an objectively good change for Yu-Gi-Oh! but unfortunately like Konami has made it very clear in the sense where certain cards and combos are things that they want to keep within the game and certain combos are you know stuff that they want to for the most part keep away and Konami has made it so that generic payoffs are way more limited in scope like the only generic payoffs we have now are like Appaloosa IP and SP and when it comes to specific payoffs, Konami's just like, yeah, go fucking wild. That's why stuff like Dimension Shifter hasn't been banned, because you can't really play that in every deck. That's why stuff like Artifact Lancia isn't banned, because you can't play Artifact Lancia every format, because it's not like there's always going to be, like, a fucking Joshua Schmidt at your locals. And that's why, you know, cards like Protos, which are very, very difficult cards to summon, and you have to play a very, very specific deck to play, is probably fine to keep around. It's Is it a scam card? Yes. Is this, like, a scam format? Yes. Should this 
format be solved by banning a bunch of dumb, ridiculous one card combos that basically have to kill your opponent? Objectively, yes. But in regards to fixing this format, Protoss is like something that's so far down the list that I just don't understand why people are trying to complain about it and be like, Protoss is the problem card. Protoss is gonna send your kids to hell or anything like that. When you look at this format, no one's saying like, we have to limit Elder, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, that's gonna be my two cents about Protoss control. Let me know what your guys' thoughts on Ritual Beasts are as a whole. I think the deck's fine. I think the deck's like a cool deck. I don't think it's like a meta deck, but it's definitely a deck where if you are a skilled enough pilot, I think I know for a fact you're gonna have like a ton of fun playing this deck. It's definitely just a blast to be like Canahawk, 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 Canahawk. It, it's it's so such a silly deck, but it's really fun in its own unique way. And like, yeah, like if Protoss is what it takes to make this deck relevant, then like, fuck it, bro. I will never summon a dark monster again. Protoss my fucking go. And yeah, it's gonna be it for this video. Goodbye forever.